COVID vaccine and your placenta, reviewing the latest literature and talking about is it really causing sterilization? Hey friends, I am Dr. Natalie Crawford. I am a board certified reproductive endocrinologist and infertility physician, and I have this YouTube channel to educate you about your body and your fertility. So subscribe right here if you wanna follow along. Today I am talking about hot off the press research, looking at COVID vaccine and your placenta. And the reason why this is so important is there was that Facebook post that went viral and I did a video about it talking about syncytion one and how the vaccine was going to cause your bodies to make antibodies that were going to attack your placenta and that if you got the vaccine it would harm your placenta causing you to have pregnancy problems or not be able to get pregnant in the future that was made up so this is going to be a quick review of a study published in the green journal the green journal is the premier journal for OBGYN. it's the journal of american obstetrics and gynecology it is very good quality research. Severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus 2, SARS-CoV-2 vaccination in pregnancy, measures of immunity and placental histopathology. That is what we are going over today. The reason why some of this villainizing of vaccines is so harmful is that we do have really good data showing that COVID infection is serious in pregnant women. So when you look at placentas of women who've had a COVID infection, we are seeing decidual arteriopathy, fetal vascular malperfusion, chronic histocytic intervillicitis. So in this study, researchers were looking to see if those changes seen with a COVID infection were also seen in women who got the COVID vaccine. And if that mechanism is the same as a producing an antibody to a spike protein that's similar to the placenta, you would think you'd have the same mechanism of inflammation or placental infarct in women who got the vaccine as you might see in women who had a COVID infection. So this study was done out of Northwestern University and looked at pregnant women who received the COVID vaccine between January to April of 21 who delivered. And it is comparing the control group to women who were pregnant and did not get the vaccine. Both groups did not have COVID infection. So if you had history of COVID infection, you were excluded from this study. So in this study, we had 84 pregnant women who received the vaccine and 116 in the control group who did not receive the vaccine. When we look at table one, we're trying to assess if there's any population-based differences. And so looking at the difference, if there was an age difference, when delivery happened, anything that would be important to us along the way. So obviously those in the control group had less antibodies than people in the vaccinated group. I don't think that is surprising. So those were antibodies at baseline. And people in the control group had a lower chance of having a vaginal delivery. So that was interesting. Okay, here's a take home finding and I'm just gonna read it word for word. Placental examination in women with vaccination showed no increased incidence of decidual arteriopathy fetal vascular malperfusion, low-grade chronic velitis or chronic histocytic intervillus compared to women in the control group. Incidence of high-grade chronic velitis was higher in the control group than in the vaccinated group. So if somebody is going to sit here and tell us that in pregnant people who get the vaccine, that the vaccine is causing an antibody to the spike protein. And that spike protein is going to go and attack your placenta and hurt your baby or harm your baby. That's false. So here's evidence right here showing that there were no incidents of placental changes. And all those changes I listed, they looked at them under a microscope. So the placenta was examined, histology is tissue segments, and showed no increased incidence. And if anything, a lower chance of having chronic inflammation, which is velitis, than in the control group. This right here is telling us that that Facebook post about the placental spike proteins is just completely false. So in a cohort of vaccinated pregnant women, there was robust antibody response. So they made antibodies to protect themselves and their babies. There was no higher incidence of placental changes. And if anything, they had a lower chance of chronic changes and they had a higher chance of vaginal delivery, things that as OBGYNs, we usually view as goals of labor. So one of the discussion point summaries of this article, there was no evidence of vaccine triggered breakdown in maternal immunologic tolerance to the fetus. This is supporting the growing literature of the safety of SARS-CoV-2 vaccination in pregnancy. I always like to talk about limitations. Yes, this is a very 
small study size, which was published quickly to bring attention to this topic that everybody is talking about. The numbers are low. Yeah, 84 pregnant vaccinated women is not thousands. I am not disagreeing with that, but it is evidence looking specifically at the placenta. This is adding to other evidence that we have. So we have growing evidence showing that if you get the COVID vaccine in pregnancy, that you are actually passing antibodies to your child in utero. So this is supporting that vaccination during pregnancy is not just protecting mom, helping you have a lower chance of preterm birth, C-section, growth restriction, ICU admission, intubation, and maternal fetal death, but also protecting your baby against COVID once it's born also. And that is amazing. There's also evidence showing that breastfeeding is passing antibodies as well. So if you are breastfeeding and you get the vaccine, we are finding high antibodies levels in the breast milk as soon as two weeks after a vaccination. So this is further evidence showing us that the vaccine not only appears safe, but it's also appearing beneficial for pregnant women. When we look at vaccination in pregnancy, we have not seen a higher rate of complications. Specifically, when we look at miscarriage and stillbirth, two things that we are always really concerned about, we are not seeing any higher incidence of those in women who got the vaccine and either conceived immediately or who were early pregnant than women who did not. And yet we know that COVID infection causes severe maternal morbidity and mortality. Pregnant women are a high risk group they are more likely to get severely ill. And as we are working to control this pandemic, if you are pregnant, growing evidence is showing that getting the vaccine is the best thing you can do for your baby. And you should be able to do so with this evidence behind you, telling you that it's not going to cause harm. I'm really upset that there have been so many rumors about the COVID vaccine going around, prying on women's health. Yeah, it's normal that if somebody's telling you something's going to hurt your pregnancy, your future fertility, then you should be concerned about it. I agree. However, when people are using these things to manipulate women's health as a political tool, I am not okay with it and I am so over it. So this is why getting studies out quickly, reviewing the literature is super important. This study is linked in the show notes, as are some of the other ones that I mentioned. I also have a link to an article that I contributed in the skim, answering some of your top questions about COVID vaccination and impact on periods, impact on fertility. And I answered some of these questions over on CNN also. And so this is information that I am working so hard to get out to everybody. I gotta be honest, a lot of people don't like to hear it and that's okay. Talking about controversial topics that are important is essential if we truly want to be advocates for education and help people be empowered to make the decision that's right for them. I don't care what decision you make. I mean, of course I wish everybody would get vaccinated and we could put this pandemic behind us, but truly I believe in autonomy and shared decision-making. That means it's your choice. What I don't want is Aunt Jill or Karen on Facebook or some bully feeding you false information that is the reason that you don't protect yourself and then something tragic happens. So please take the time to educate yourself, make the decision that's right for you. I'm a fertility doctor. If the COVID vaccination made it so that nobody could be pregnant or everybody lost their babies or that my embryos that my patients have worked so hard to get could not implant into these bodies, we would not do it. I would easily say, hold off, need more information. But that is part of our job as physicians is to do the best with the information that we have so that we can take the best care of our patients. As an IVF doctor, we make our patients come off of everything. We make them come off all medications. You can't drink alcohol. You have to limit your caffeine, can't smoke weed. We are like super OCD about controlling the environment. And what the evidence shows us is that the risk of the vaccine is much lower than the risk of COVID. And really what we're here for is to get you a healthy baby in your arms. As always, I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. You can follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD, or you can listen to the As A Woman podcast for more in-depth fertility education. Thanks, friends. Mm -hmm.